Hi guys, we are looking at this material, clay, and what we can do with it in art. Clay's been used by humans from around 25,000 BC. We know this, we found artefacts in excavations all over the world. From around 10,000 BC, we have discovered vessels. Now a vessel might be something functional in the modern age, it might be a mug or a plate, but there's a big difference between this and this material but they are one and the same. So clay comes from the earth. It's a form of deposit. It's like sedimentary rock. And we don't obviously go out digging around Manchester looking for this raw material. We buy it processed, ready-made. At this stage, the clay has been cleaned of impurities and it's ready to use and manipulate. And you can see how plastic it is. And I mean plastic in its malleable state that I can press into it and it will hold its form. It will balance and I can do lots of different things with it. I can change its form instantly and I can pull it back. When clay is wet, it has a water content and it can be manipulated. It's called greenware at this stage because we can keep working on it and keep it active. When it dries out, it changes in nature. It becomes very brittle and it will snap. At this stage, you can't remodel it, you can't reshape it. It's no longer plastic in the same way this is plastic and malleable. So these pieces of clay are bone dry and you might think they can be scrapped, but we can recycle them. In the pottery, we have these large scale bins in which we have water and we pop in the dry clay. The dry clay will then soak down. There's a different type of clay in here but the clay is soaking down and becoming soft, like liquid clay, like a slip. When this has soaked down and become a soft material, we pop it onto the plaster beds in the pottery, which will absorb a lot of the moisture from it. At that point, it is then processed through a giant machine. This big machine is called a hog mill, and it grinds up the clay with a big motor in this section and pumps it out the end into these large sausage-like extrusions which can be used in the pottery again by you to make your work. Now on the table I have some pieces made by GCSE pupils, younger pupils and a manufactured cup. Now all of these pieces are different, they're no longer malleable and I can't rehydrate them. Imagine if I wet this and it becomes soft again like I've just shown you with the pug mill. Um, Something's changed, and what's changed is they have been fired. And when clay is fired, it becomes permanent. So if you just think of this as becoming permanent, you'll understand you can't re-manipulate it. So at school, within the pottery, we have a kiln room. Now in here is the large kiln. If we look inside it, we will see it's heavily insulated, lots of bricks in with a metal frame, and it's got these heat coil elements. Now, it's pre-programmed, and the technicians do all this aspect of the work, to fire to different temperatures based on the type of clay we're using. There's earthenware, stoneware, and porcelain clays. And we use different types of clays for different things. So when something's been fired, you might leave it in its just fired state. It's called biscuit firing, a single firing. Or you could go on to add something to the surface. Now, to make things permanent, you can paint them, but that wouldn't be permanent. This has got an oxide on the surface. On here, it has some stain. And on this piece, there's been some oxide and there's also some glaze. We can see it's shiny on the surface. So we'll look at glazing and decoration techniques in future One videos. thing we need to consider when firing our work is that clay can still have air or water pockets inside it. Imagine we pop this in the kiln and we take it up to 1,000 degrees at a fairly rapid speed. If we do that, the water and the air within it will expand quicker than the material around it, creating an explosion. This could damage your work or something next to it in the kiln or even the kiln itself. So we ideally have to take air and water out of the clay or work in a way that prevents that from happening. This piece looks solid, but if we look on the inside of it, it is hollowed away. And that's the ideal way to resolve the problem, is to make things that have air vents within them. So here I have a solid piece of clay, if that's the shape I wanted. 
I'm going to push my thumb in, essentially hollow it out. And that will be fine because the air could escape. Now, if I close over the hole with another piece of clay, I'm not doing this with any intention to fire it. It's just a rough piece to show you. I've now created a piece that's got an air pocket within. We know there's an air pocket there. You see me construct it. I'm using the end of a scraper tool and popping a hole in it right into the center. And that now would act as an air vent so that air could escape safely and I would be able to fire this very rough looking piece within the kiln. So I have a cheese wire here and I'm just going to cut through the piece that I've constructed to show you the cavity and the air vent that we generated. So when working with clay, we must always think about how to prepare it and ensure there isn't air trapped inside it. One thing you can do, which is good for beginners, is called a slap wedge. Well, you see this bang clay on the table. This is a stone bench, so it's not sticking. If we were working on other materials, it might be sticking. This forces the air up to the surface and is a good way for a beginner to get the air out the centre of the clay. Another way of doing it is to wedge it. You see what I'm doing? This is called a ram's head wedge. I'm using the heel of my hands to force the surface against each other and press and compact the clay. So whenever you're working with clay, you need to think about lots of factors within the project and preparation before you begin. Good luck.